Hello, my name's Tony Courtney and this is Matthew Campbell and we're researchers with the Queensland Department of Primary Industries and Fisheries. In recent years, bycatch from trawl fisheries has become an issue to the public, to fishermen and fishery managers in Queensland and in Australia and overseas. Research conducted by ourselves and others in Australia and overseas has shown that square mesh cot ends can be a highly effective bycatch reduction device. This DVD is part of an extension project which is funded by the Australian Government's Fisheries Research and Development Corporation, the FRDC, and the Queensland Department of Primary Industries and Fisheries. The purpose of the D DVD is to help fishermen become familiar with the design, construction and use of square mesh cot ends. In addition to that, we also present results and discussion from research that we've undertaken on square mesh cot ends in Queensland's prawn fisheries and scallop fisheries. Finally, the DVD also includes details instructions on how to design and install square mesh cot ends. We hope that you find the DVD interesting and perhaps that you'll trial square mesh cot ends in your particular trawling operation. Prawn trawl fisheries generate a higher proportion of bycatch than any other fishery type and account for more than one third of the estimated total global discards from fisheries. In most prawn and scallop trawl fisheries, the weight of the bycatch exceeds that of the target catch by several times. Tropical and subtropical prawn and scallop species share their habitat with a diverse range of animals, a large proportion of which are susceptible to capture by trawl gear. Bycatch is defined as that part of the catch discarded by fishes. Recent research has revealed that the bycatch in Queensland is comprised of at least 1,300 species, but could be double that amount. Bycatch is a complicated issue due to the fact that it not only includes species that are not marketable, it also includes species that are marketable but are discarded due to restrictions based on size or gender. Further, bycatch can include species of conservation interest that are protected by law, such as sea turtles and sea snakes. Also, bycatch can include species of interest to other sectors, which can cause conflict between trawl fishers and other stakeholder groups. During the late 90s, managers of prawn trawl fisheries around the world recognised the need to minimise the incidental capture of turtles by trawlers. This was due to the fact that some sea turtle species were classified as endangered or threatened. As such, the use of turtle excluder devices, or TEDs, became mandatory in northern Australian prawn trawl fisheries. In Queensland, TEDs became mandatory on all otter trawl vessels by the end of 2001. Since that time, there has been increasing pressure from conservation agencies, the public and the Federal Department of Environment and Heritage to introduce measures to reduce the amount of discarded bycatch. The implementation of the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 allows the Commonwealth Government, through the Department of Environment and Heritage, to assess the sustainability of all export fisheries within Australia. Apart from the sustainability issues, there are other reasons to reduce bycatch, including reducing sorting times, improvements in product quality, minimising the impacts of trawling on recreational species. In an attempt to quantify the effects of TEDs and BRDs in Queensland's trawl fishery, the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation funded a research project in collaboration with the Queensland Department of Primary Industries and Fisheries in 2001. This research was required to measure how effectively the TEDs and BRDs used by fishers were reducing bycatch. During this project, information was collected on the catch rates of the target species and the bycatch using different TEDs and BRDs under commercial fishing conditions and during dedicated research charters. Of all the BRDs that were tested throughout this project, 
The square mesh cot end was by far the most effective BRD at reducing bycatch in both the deep water eastern king prawn and the scallop fisheries. Square mesh cot ends were chosen for testing because a large proportion of the animals in the bycatch in these fisheries are small compared to the targeted prawns and scallops and as such, it was thought that good bycatch exclusion rates could be expected. The first charter was conducted in the deepwater Eastern King Prawn Fishery in southern Queensland. Over 10 nights, 65 individual two nautical mile trawl shots were completed in the area between Southport and Noosa. The square mesh cot end was tested with and without a TED and catches from these nets were compared to those from a net with neither a TED nor a BRD, referred to as a standard cot end. The square mesh cot end BRD used was constructed out of 3mm braided polyethylene with a mesh size of 47mm. The square mesh section was 66 bars round and 76 bars long. Throughout the charter, the average amount of bycatch per two nautical mile trawl from the standard cot end was 6.8 kilograms. When the square mesh cot end was used, the catch rate of bycatch was 5.5 kilograms, a reduction of 19%. Further, when the square mesh cot end was used in conjunction with a TED, the bycatch catch rate was 4.9 kilograms per two nautical mile trawl, a reduction of 28% when compared to the standard cot end. It is important to note that these reductions occurred with no loss of marketable king prawns. After these encouraging results, a square mesh cot end was tested during a dedicated research charter in Queensland's scallop fishery. Over eight nights, 59 individual two nautical mile trawl shots were completed in the area between Harvey Bay and Yapoon. As with the Deepwater Eastern King Prawn Charter, the square mesh cot end was tested with and without a TED. And the catches from these nets were compared to those from a net with neither a TED nor a BRD. The square mesh cot end was constructed out of 6mm braided polyethylene with a mesh size of 100mm, which is 4 inches. The square mesh section was 36 bars round and 40 bars long. Throughout the charter, the average catch rate of bycatch from the standard cot end was 45.2 kilograms per two nautical mile trawl. When the square mesh cot end was used, the catch rate was reduced by 29% to 32.3 kilograms per two nautical mile trawl. The bycatch catch rate from the cot end with a TED only was 18 kilograms per two nautical mile trawl, a reduction of 60% when compared to the standard cot end. Furthermore, when the square mesh cot end was used in conjunction with a TED, the bycatch catch rate was 9.8 kilograms, a reduction of 78% compared to the standard cot end. These reductions in bycatch were achieved without significant losses of legal size scallops. However, the square mesh cot ends excluded a significant amount of undersized scallops, thereby reducing any incidental trawl-induced mortality on these smaller animals. These graphs show the number of scallops caught of each size. Note that the number of smaller scallops is reduced significantly when a square mesh cot end is used. The catch rate of legal Moreton Bay bugs was significantly reduced using the square mesh cot end and the combination of the TED and BRD together. This result can be attributed to the large four inch mesh used and it is expected that these reductions would be minimized by using smaller mesh in the square mesh cot end. Once again, the number of undersized Moreton Bay bugs was significantly reduced, thereby minimizing trawl induced mortality on these animals. There are two reasons the square mesh cot ends performed so well in these fisheries. Firstly, because the catch accumulates in the cot end, the square mesh allows small fish to escape easily from the net without having to expend large amounts of energy trying to find an escape hole or route. This is important when trying to exclude small fish as they generally lack swimming speed and stamina. Further, small crabs, sea urchins, shellfish, etc., are excluded from the square mesh cot ends as they simply fall through the large square meshes. Secondly, large mesh sizes are particularly suited to these fisheries as the target species are relatively large. By using larger mesh sizes, more animals can be excluded. 
This was particularly the case in the scallop charter, where the minimum legal size of scallops is at least 90 millimetres, allowing the use of four inch mesh. As part of the current extension project, project staff constructed square mesh cot ends that were offered to fishers free of charge for trials at sea. In all, 36 square mesh cot ends were given to fishers, with most being used in the deepwater king prawn fishery. Of those that trialled square mesh cot ends, most reported reductions in bycatch, with over 35% of fishers reporting reductions greater than 20%. Importantly, these reductions occurred with little or no loss of marketable prawns or scallops. During the extension project, square mesh cot ends were tested as part of a research project that was testing the effects of BRDs on the catch rate of sea snakes in the tiger prawn fishery. During these trials, square mesh cot ends reduced bycatch by approximately 33% without any significant loss of marketable prawns of any species. Results showed that the square mesh cot end was able to reduce the capture of very small size classes. This graph represents the average number of Endeavour prawns of each size class caught from each shot. Of particular interest is the fact that the square mesh cot end reduced the weight of the smaller size classes but maintained the catch rates of the larger prawns. Further, the square mesh cot end reduced the capture of sea snakes of all species by approximately 60%. Although constructing durable square mesh cot ends has been difficult in the past, methods developed during this extension project have simplified the process. This segment of the DVD details methods on how to construct square mesh cot ends for use in Queensland's deepwater eastern king prawn and leader prawn fisheries, where the target species are relatively large. In Queensland, legislation requires that a square mesh cot end is at least 75 bars long, with a minimum mesh size of 45 millimetres, knot to knot. In this DVD, we will construct a square mesh cot end that is 78 bars long and 80 bars round using 50mm by 3mm braided polyethylene cot end material. The first method for the construction of square mesh cot ends is based on an idea developed by Brisbane netmaker Wally Hill. To construct the square mesh cot end, you will need 120 mesh by 100 mesh, 50mm by 3mm diamond mesh cot end, and a roll of 3mm braided twine. From the cot end material, count across 80 meshes and make a cut down 80 bars as shown. From here, cut across the meshes like so. Once completed, go back to the starting point and cut from here down the bars as shown. The panel of net should look like this. If required, remove the knots from the meshes at this point. Next, sew the meshes together to form a cylinder using maker's knots before salvaging the knots at either end of the square mesh cot end using figure eight knots, leaving a one bar overlap. The finished square mesh cot end is now ready to be attached to the aft edge of the diamond mesh section. Typically, standard cot ends are 100 meshes long and are constructed from one and three quarter inch 60 ply cot end material. As the square mesh cot end is only 78 bars long, or approximately 39 meshes, a diamond mesh section made from the same material as a standard cot end is added to the forward edge of the square mesh cot end. This ensures that the square mesh cot end is the same length as a standard cot end, allowing the square mesh cot end to be spilled and deployed in the same manner as a standard cot end. In this case, a cot end 125 meshes round and 55 meshes long is sewn onto the forward edge of the square mesh cot end. This is laced to the forward edge of the square mesh cot end at a ratio of five meshes to three bars. Similarly, a diamond mesh section five meshes long and 125 meshes round is sewn onto the aft edge of the square mesh cot end so that drawstrings can be attached in the normal manner. Next, a belly rope is attached to the square mesh cot end to provide additional strength. Stretch a length of 12 millimetre polyethylene rope between two items and salvage three meshes to the rope as shown. Stretch the square mesh section out and mark the rope. Measure the distance and calculate approximately 90% of this length. And attach the forward edge of the square mesh section to this point. Next, measure the distance between the two attachment points and place a mark on the rope at this point. Count 
forward 39 bars and attach this bar to the point halfway between the two attachment points. Continue salvaging forward from the first attachment point until at least five meshes of the forward diamond mesh section are salvaged to the rope. On completion, trim the rope and burn each end. Repeat this process for both sides. We recommend at least two belly ropes are used, but it is possible to use three or four evenly spaced around the cot end. Once completed, the square mesh cot end will look like this. Because of the shape of the meshes, the cot end will form a helix shape. At this point, the cot end can be stretched out between two points to stretch the mesh square. However, the cot ends will hang correctly after they have been sewn onto a net and used. Some netting importers have begun importing mesh specifically designed to be used in the construction of square mesh cot ends. This particular square mesh material is constructed from 3mm braided polyethylene twine with a 50mm or 2 inch mesh size. Begin by cutting a section of the square mesh 80 bars wide as shown here. Once again we will construct a square mesh section that is 78 bars long and 80 bars round. Starting at one corner, make an 80 mesh cut diagonally down the meshes. We prefer to remove the knots and this is best done at this stage. After completing this cut, count along the 78 bars before cutting diagonally back up the meshes. You should now have a piece of net that looks like this. Next, wrap one corner of the panel over to the other corner and sew the meshes together to form a cylinder using maker's knots. Once again, salvage the knots at either end, leaving a one bar overlap as shown. Finish the square mesh cot end using the same methods described earlier. Here are the two completed square mesh cot ends. We hope that you found the DVD interesting. We have included a net plan of the square mesh cot end for use in the scallop fishery under the cover of the DVD. We believe that there's great potential for use of square mesh cot ends in Queensland's trawl fisheries and we hope that you try them with success. Thanks for taking the time to watch our DVD.